from the College by the Lake, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Local, regional, national, and international guests discussing the issues and topics affecting the way you live are on Forum, the North Idaho College Public Forum, with your host and moderator, political scientist, Tony Stewart. It is always such a pleasure to bring you a topic that we have not discussed on this program before. And after 26 years, it is challenging to have a topic that we have not covered in some other way, but today that is the case. Our topic is European architecture uh, photography. We have a very gifted uh, guest today that has traveled to Europe many times, and while there has uh, had photography uh, that he's used to capture the great architecture of Europe, and I know many of you who've traveled to Europe appreciate uh, how beautiful that uh, is in, in capturing buildings and gardens and so forth. I welcome to the program uh, one of my colleagues, uh, Michael Miller. He chairs the business division at North Idaho College and is a longtime tenured faculty member. And uh, it's such a pleasure to have one of our colleagues here. And I would add in introducing our guest today that we have great talent on the faculty at North Idaho College. And here's another example of someone that has uh, captured uh, something that we're very interested in. And Michael, it's a pleasure to welcome you to the program. And I've worked with you many, many years, and you're kind to take time to share this work with us today. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Tony. I appreciate being here. And as always, I'm very pleased <coughs> to have regular panelist Steve Schink, who is the Dean of College Relations and Development at North Idaho College, and I shall ask Steve to commence today's question with our guest. Thank you, Tony. Mike, um, tell me how it is that a college business instructor originally from Missouri got interested in the photography of, of European architecture. Well, my, um, my father-in-law, Charlie Schwartz, was a professional photographer and and he taught me how to uh, to take photographs and really started from the beginning with with uh, uh, testing camera lenses and and cameras and combinations and my wife is an art historian and so she dragged me along to Europe whether I wanted to go or not and uh, I'll pay for that comment I'm <laughs> sure <laughs> and and so we uh, we've gone back and and something that I did get interested in then was taking the architectural photographs while she was uh, wandering around looking at, at other parts of what was going on. Well, and, and we want to focus, of course, on the, on the photography and on the architecture, but I'm curious, is it, is it, which is the primary hobby for you? Do, you? do you practice your photography in other ways as well, or is it mostly linked to this interest in, in architecture? It, anymore, it seems like that's a big part of it. it. It used to be that we documented our family through the year and made a an annual photographic yearbook, and uh, with my children pretty well grown and gone, that's uh, that's not something we're doing. And so, yes, the the real focus is on on doing this, and uh, it's it's something so that my wife uses these as slides in her classes, and then comes back and tells me how much the students enjoyed the photographs and how much better they are than the commercial ones. And of course, that just pumps me up to do it again, and. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and think that I'm making a contribution there. Well, this is, a, I think, a wonderful topic for a show because it combines something that many people have no knowledge of, in this country at least, European mm -hmm. architecture, with something most of us have some familiarity with, which is photography. Mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. Speaking for just a minute to those uh, amateur photographers out there in the audience, what now is, is your, your camera and lens combination of choice? What do you, what do you use predominantly to take these uh. pictures we're going to see in a few minutes? I'm, I've used a Nikon F for a number of years. Actually, different versions of Nikons, Nikon F and F2 and F3. And, and I, uh, I took uh, two 8008s, and that's what I'm using now, but I'm only taking one body to Europe. I, I got tired of lugging as much equipment. And then I've usually got a wide-angle lens, a normal lens, and a telephoto lens. Uh, and I've gone to a telephoto zoom. I, I, Jesse Tinsley, cover your, your ears when you don't hear that. But uh, that's what I've done. Thank you. I want to say, uh, Mike, to our audience that uh, our production director, Lindy Turner, who's also very gifted, he's a, a video artist, has taken some of your works and has captured those for us on video, but even before we did the program mm -hmm. today. And in a moment, we're going to go through those. But before we do, uh, I would like for you to tell us a little more about uh, how long you've been doing this. I know much of it's in Southern Europe. and. Before the show, you indicated to me that uh, in 1982, 1987, 1990, 93, 94, 95, you had been to Europe and taken some of those that we're going mm -hmm. to see today. So just give us a little idea of the, the volumes of work that you have. And I'll add one more thing, and that is I had the pleasure of going through part of that to select those mm -hmm. of today. And 
uh, I was just so enriched by how many that you have and how well they are done. Well, those are the, the trips that, um, uh, that are represented on the slides today, and so all of those trips involved Italy, since uh, the only photographs we have are today are from Italy. There were other trips, and uh, there probably were other trips to Italy that just aren't represented here. Uh, typically, when, when we've gone, I've tried to take a roll of film for each day we're going and try to shoot a roll of film per day. It never works out. I, I, that's just, um, I know if you're taking snapshots, you can do that, but when every picture you're trying to take with a tripod, trying to set it up it, and, and uh, not have the hordes of tourists in the way or all the automobiles, it just doesn't work that way. And, and the scenes that you will see uh, typically don't show people, and sometimes you're sitting there waiting for quite a while for the, the cloud to get out of the uh, away from the sun and the people to get away from what you're photographing. So the setting yes. somewhat controls what you do and when you do it? Oh, it sure does, yes. I want to ask the staff now, uh, under the direction of Linda Turner, to put these slides up on the monitor that we have, and from that we will take a look at the first one here. Yes, this is um, Orvieto Cathedral. It's a little hill town in, in one of the famous hill towns in northern Italy. And uh, it, it was a, when we were shooting this, it was a real hot day in terms of the light. That is very sunny and, and I wanted to find a way to frame this cathedral. And, and uh, so what I did is backed up in one of the narrow little streets and just shot the dome, shot the, the facade uh, through that narrow little street. And, and of course, that was one where you put the tripod up and then uh, when, when the car gets by, you put the tripod up and try to get the picture before the next car comes along and you get the, and you get the uh, tripod up and then you realize there's a, an electric line that goes right across the middle and you move it uh, and try it again. And eventually, and this turned out to be a very nice, nice shot. Uh, <clears throat> this this uh, picture here is, uh, uh, in, from Verona, it's the San Bernardino Library, and uh, this shot is a. It's it's interesting to me because we were, when you get into churches, you you end up with sometimes officious individuals that uh, some to tell you you can't photograph or even if there's no sign and or that you can't use a flash or that you can't use a tripod and and I, I rarely do use a flash there because of. I'm aware that's usually what they don't want you to do. And we were photographing in this church and, and uh, asking uh, one of the monks if that was acceptable. And he asked if we would like to see the library and like to photograph that. And this was a place that the, uh, the monks in, uh, in this convent uh, held their meetings. And so he was showing us where they met. And it was a, a, a medieval room, really obviously very spectacular room. It sure was. And this is a, a picture in Venice. Um, near the, for people that have been in Venice, this is the Grand Canal, and it's fairly near the railroad station near the Gritty Palace, and it's just a, a pretty typical scene in Venice. And of course, one of the things that's always interesting about Venice is that the boat in the middle of this picture is, is a working boat. So this is a, a mason of some sort. I mean, there's a concrete mixer on that boat and, and a load of sand and they're going to a job somewhere in downtown Venice. And this is uh, another northern uh, uh, Italy scene. This is in Vicenza or just outside Vicenza. This is the Villa Capri and it's usually called La Rotunda. It's the, uh, the model for the um, Jefferson's Monticello and, it, and it's very much like Jefferson's Monticello. And this was a day when it wasn't open, it's owned and, and lived in by a private family. And this was a day they weren't there, or they may have been there. This was a day when it wasn't open to the public and we came back. I took this picture, I'm trying to look and see when, and I don't have a date on it, but uh, earlier in this decade, and, and then we went back last year specifically to go through it on a day it was open. And it was spectacular. Yeah, it was breathtaking. This is the <clears throat> this is um, the inside of the side aisle of the church in Bologna, the cathedral in Bologna, and, and uh, San Petronio. 
I took this one in 1982, and uh, what we've done when we've gone to Europe, and and I'm taking 20 or 30 rolls of film, I take mailers and I send the film back. Um, some people say, that, well, they're, aren't you worried about it getting lost? And yes, I am, and yes, I have had, I have lost film that way. But, um, but this way, if I lose something, I don't lose everything. It's not like it's all packed in the bag or goes through an x-ray machine with me at one time and, and I could lose it all. And, and this particular photograph, um, at that time I had not done any prints. I just had my wife use it in the classroom. And with this photograph, uh, one, when we were, came back, my father and, and mother-in-law, father-in-law and mother-in-law had made this particular print and uh, to try to show me what what I ought to be doing with the, the slides I was taking. And that really launched me into doing that. This is the um, uh, St. Peter's in Rome, the, uh, the St. Peter's Basilica dome above uh, Bernini's altarpiece that is at the, showing at the bottom of this absolutely magnificent, huge dome. And That's breathtaking. It is, and, and, and like, uh, St. Peter's, like many of these places, doesn't want you to use a tripod, so I'm, I'm always there on the, on the floor getting in everybody's way and propping, uh, propping the camera up and, and finding some way to do this on a remote control basis. Did you take several of these before you captured this particular one? Or did you uh, yeah, I, I, I took a number of, of pictures of this dome and I've got pictures of most of the, of the other side aisle domes in St. Peter's. And uh, this is one that uh, a cart in St. Mark's Square in Venice, and uh, it kind of, I like the colors, I like the, the showmanship and display, but it's, it's kind of the, uh, I always thought if, it, if somehow you could get the people out of there enough to get the picture, it would have made a great contrast between this and St. Mark's Basilica, which is a, you know, an old, old, uh, Basilica there and on, on the square, and here we've got the modern tourist trinkets. Yeah, but you, but you capture life and, and what's going on. I think there's a real variety in your work, both like cathedrals and, and mm -hmm. work on the street. This <coughs> is, is uh, a view at the end of the, of the Grand Canal at St. Mark's Square, looking out across uh, Santa Maria della Salute, which is, on the, which is the church that you can see on the other side of the canal. I don't know what else to tell you about that particular one. It's uh, and this is down south of of uh, Naples, uh, probably two hours on the west coast of uh, of Italy, just uh, probably a mile from the sea. This is a, uh, a Greek temple. In, it's in Italy, but it's a Greek temple. This is Paestum, and this is the Temple of Neptune. Uh, we were there on a day in which the, the, the clouds were extremely dramatic, the real gunmetal gray kinds of, of clouds coming in. Uh, you could see the, the, the clouds coming back from building over the mountains coming back toward us. And we, we huddled under one of these uh, temple colonnades while the rain came down and took pictures before and took pictures after. And of course, the rain makes things clear. Uh, clears the sky up, and this is the same place. This is Paestum also, and this is called the the Sacred Way. Uh, this is a Roman road with uh, the oleander bushes blooming along both sides. Just spectacular. It was spectacular to be there and walk along it and think that people had been walking on that road for more than 2,000 years. There's centuries and centuries of captures here now. Mm -hmm. uh, another little hill town in northern Italy, Monte Regione. We stopped and uh, and picnicked in a in a field of wheat stubble, wheat straw, and uh, that obviously they were going to pick up and and bale, but hadn't. We stopped there, and while my wife was uh, was getting food items out, I turned around and put the tripod up and and took a picture of the walled city that was up above us. Pretty typical medieval walled city of of the hill towns of northern Italy. And this is the uh, gallery of maps in the Vatican Museum in Rome. Uh, the whole ceiling is, is one 
painting after another uh, for, I don't know, what, 150 feet long or maybe longer, a real a long, long stretch, fairly narrow uh, uh, walkway, you could probably walk eight or eight people abreast down the hallway. And this is one in which I, I wanted to get a picture and it's real difficult because of all the people walking along and no tripod, so I'm, I've got the camera on my um, camera case and propped up and trying to level it with on camera cases and, uh, and I'm down on the floor getting real dirty uh, trying to make sure that I can get a, a photograph because you, you can't do it handheld and get them sharp enough. Well, you have to be in somewhat good physical condition to take some of these photographs. Well, not, yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm in trouble anymore <laughs> with that. But uh, this is in uh, Rome near the Spanish Steps, a little side street that's uh, um, called the Street of the, uh, the Carriages is wh what it would translate into English. Just typical small Roman street scene, small Roman, uh, small Italian outside cafe. Just, just an, a typical scene. That is very, very interesting. And Mike, thank you for taking us through those. And I can see why your wife says to her classes that these are things they should see. And I, I want to add a footnote on behalf of Barbara. She's a professor of art at Eastern Washington University. And mm -hmm. her, she herself is very, very gifted. And with that, I shall return to Steve Sheenan. My curiosity has the best of me. Um, the prohibition against tripods in many of the mm -hmm. places you photograph, what's the, the point of that? Probably to get in people's way. I, I don't know. Some of the, it, it, you feel like they make the rules up as they go along sometimes. You go into cathedrals, uh, and in some places, there are signs in front indicating no flash, or, uh, and that may be all, and you go in and you try to photograph, and they say no, no photography, and you, so you don't photograph. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I think a lot of the, and of course, it, it's frustrating to me because I'm going to honor what they want, and yet anybody with a little you know, point-and-shoot camera uh, doesn't stop to think that when they take a picture, the flash is going to go off. And so you go into these places that have said no flash, and there are constant flash guns going off. And I'm not shooting anything because I realize they don't they don't want me shooting with a tripod, and they don't want me shooting with a flash, and uh, so I don't. But I, I assume that's the reason. You get into places where they want you to buy a permit, which I don't mind as long as I know what the rules are. That's mm -hmm. great. It's it's just the frustration is you never know what the rules are, and one person will tell you one thing and the next. Another. So my policy is usually, I look to see if they have a prohibition. If they do, I don't shoot. If they don't, I go in and I set up and I, and I don't try to hide. I just start to shoot. And if they tell me no, I put everything away and and don't shoot. Well, that's uh, that's pretty good advice for uh, for other amateur and, and professional photographers who are doing work similar to yours. But what else can you offer uh, our viewers in terms of? Uh, of um, do's and don'ts of, of architectural photography, recognizing that not all of them are going to have the, have had the background mm -hmm. uh, that you have. Uh, I, I, it's, it's just one of those things that your eye, you have to choose what you're going to do. I, there are so many variations of this. We go to a lot of churches, and so I end up taking a lot of pictures of, of churches and, and buildings like that. Um, certainly, you, you need to be critical as you take the photograph. Obviously, the, from Phil Corliss to Ansel Adams, uh, any, anybody that takes w pictures with a bigger format camera doesn't take very many photographs and has to be very critical. And, and so you, you, you need to do that to start with. Um, but you just have to take a lot of, a lot of photographs. Learn from experience. You do. Um, you mentioned that you, you photographed a lot of churches. And I was keeping uh, track as, as you showed those beautiful slides. Um, um, and I was going to comment on that too. Are, are they among your favorite uh, subjects? Yes, they are. They're, I mean, they're gorgeous, yeah, and it, it's uh, it, 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 it could make a religious person out of you just just be, because of the magnificence of the buildings. Mm -hmm. They are they are incredible, and it's I think one of the frustrations, and one of the reasons I like that shot of San um, Petronio in Bologna is that is that it, with the people in there, it gives you a very small idea of the scale. It's often hard to get. A far enough away from people to take pictures, and if they're too much in the foreground, they dominate the picture instead of the building. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't take pictures of people over there 
and my wife, up until this year, my wife hadn't taken pictures. Uh, this last summer, I, she decided she wanted to, and so she took the other camera body along, and she took pictures. It was a wonderful experience. She speaks all the languages, and, and I really don't. And my concern has always been I'm not willing to take somebody's picture if I haven't asked them, at least in general. I, I, don't, I don't want somebody being upset with me because I poked a camera in their face. And she just thought, well, you just move further back and put a telephoto lens on. And I think she found out this year that that doesn't really work if you want to. You have to fill the frame. Uh, and it's kind of an irony. We're using a different ratio here th than we uh, on the TV monitors than you would with a 35 millimeter camera, which is um, the, the 3 to 2 ratio. And then I end up, in, instead of what should be to fill the ratio, an 8 by 12 inch photograph, I squeeze that down to 8 by 10, and then, it, and then uh, we have to crop that, or Lin, Lindsay did, to, to fit uh, the, the TV set. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was real interesting with my wife this year. She, she's now no longer telling me that I should take all these people pictures. I, I still, I mean, I'm not, I'm, I think it's wonderful. If, uh, for the people that can carry that off and that can take pictures of people, and uh, that, that's great. I just can't come up and stick my camera in your face and do it unless I, you know that I'm doing it and it doesn't seem to upset you. Mm -hmm. For what, me, that's a problem. If Tony will let me, I'll ask one last photography question, something you mentioned once again earlier that caught my interest. Um, what advice do you give to people, and this is something I always wonder about too as I go through um, uh, airport security stations, what about handling uh, film and cameras uh, and x-ray machines? I haven't, I, m what they tell me is that unless it's really fast film, and I'm trying to go the other way, I try to use the slowest film I can live with, uh, because I'm going to get better detail. Mm -hmm. That slow film I shouldn't have a problem, and so far I have never seen that I have had a problem. Of course, then I turn right around, and any time I get a chance, I've got it in lead foil bags, and uh, pack pack as much of it as I can in lead foil bags. Just to but, be on the safe side. Yes, and I'm taking more film than, than legally I'm supposed to. I mean, I know they, they don't want you taking 30 rolls of film in, or 20 rolls of film, but um, it's it's certainly expensive over there, and uh, and I I don't want to be without film, and I want to have the kind of film I want, not the kind of film uh, they want me to shoot or that they're going to have available to me. <coughs> you know, a question came to mind as uh, you were having the dialogue, <coughs> excuse me, with uh, Steve, and that is that you've been doing this a long time, and I'm wondering if there's been a change from the early days and now. Uh, let me be more specific. <coughs> When you go to Europe, are you already organized to the point of saying that these are the type of photographs I want this time? Are you more impulsive as you come upon scenes and you decide that's what you want? Or has that changed over the years as you become more professional in trying to capture uh, the architecture? Well, I think you, you, the more you do it, the more experience you have, the more you recognize what you're trying to accomplish and how you're going to have to frame that or, or um, uh, one one thing is that light has so much to do with the quality of the photograph, and um, hot direct light is usually not very good. So you'd like to photograph early, and you'd like to photograph late, and you'd like to photograph with uh, dramatic skies and all this stuff. And it doesn't always work that way. That's that's one of the problems when you're going around Europe. You're, uh, the Europeans eat so late, and I'm always sitting here thinking. This is really a lousy idea. About the time the sun is going down is when I ought to be taking the night photographs um, instead of going out to eat. And I shouldn't be staying out to eat so late because I ought to be getting up really early before the people are out. When you do, you get some wonderful scenes with really soft, nice light and not too many people and not too many cars. But that's, uh, that's, that takes stamina. It, it really does. to, to be working all that time taking pictures, and particularly if the weather is hot. Makes it a long day. I also was observing from the photographs that we have that obviously when you're indoors taking photographs in a cathedral, it's uh, as far as time consumption and also what you do is easier because the elements outside are much more hindering. That's right. Yeah, that, that's, you take the outside pictures early, you take the outside pictures late and go in in the middle of the day and, and uh, 
if we don't have that much time, it, I don't care how many times we go there, it always seems like we have a schedule and uh, there are times when I'm saying this is a wonderful cathedral or, or whatever it is, wonderful building, I'd like to spend two or three days here, but we're not going to spend two or three days there. It would, it would be nice to stay longer and get better light, um, but you don't do that. I can't resist this question, it's an impossible one. I've been doing this program for 26 years and people ask me of the 1,250 some programs we've done, what is your favorite? That's an impossible question. Mm -hmm. But I play that game with myself and have <laughs> certain ones that I think are really highlights. But of all the photographs you've taken, I know you told Steve that uh, you love cathedrals and all, but is there a particular group of photographs or a few that stand out to you that are uh, extraordinary compared with your other work? Well, there's certainly better photographs and, and worse, and uh, there's some that I like um, a lot. I, that, as I said, that, uh, that San Petronio I like just because my father-in-law did it for me and, and my mother-in-law and, and, and tried to interest me in, in making the prints from the slides. So that has a lot of sentimental value, but sure, there are, there are photographs that I like and there are photographs that other people say, oh, isn't that wonderful? And I'm looking at it and thinking, well, no, because it really shouldn't have, it's not the best composition. It, uh, uh, it, it's not as sharp as it should be or, or whatever. And, and uh, you have that critical eye, and you have to develop that. Sure. Steve Sheen. Uh, I thought Tony had stolen the, one of my questions there for a second, but mine is slightly different from his. Forget the, the quality of your own photograph, whether mm -hmm. you're happy with your work or not. Um, uh, of all the structures you've, you've had an opportunity to see and, and photograph, is there one you think is, is uh, the most impressive? Any cathedral or yeah. other structure that stands out there in your mind? Number, obviously, St. Peter's is just a tremendous um, the, the, the size of it the, the, the scope from the exterior statues and the, and the, uh, the, the it's just a magnificent cathedral we're getting a message that there's not much time left but very quickly the, all the photographs you showed us were from Italy are there other countries in Europe that you think are impressive from an architectural standpoint oh yeah sure any uh, any favorites well, I like the English cathedrals and the French cathedrals. I mean, uh, well, well, I mean, the, in the countryside. Uh, I have to interrupt on that note. I'd love to have you back sometime, Mike, and we can pick up at that point and, mm -hmm. and show some more of your work. Thank you so much on behalf of Steve Schink and our staff. It was a wonderful program. Thank you for having me. Ladies and gentlemen, we have really enjoyed this program, bringing it to you, and I, I'm sure you felt like you've been to Europe today and enjoyed that architecture. And I'd like to invite you to be with us again next week at the same time when we will move to yet another issue until then, please have a good week. I am Tony Stewart. The North Idaho College Public Forum was videotaped live from the studios of instructional technology on the campus of North Idaho College for viewing at this more appropriate time. We invite you to join us again next week for another all new edition of the North Idaho College Public Forum on this public television station.